Emma, wake up. No. Hello? Hello? Is anyone there? there? Can't forget this evening. Welcome, one and all, that we were just watching um, a trailer from Moon Garden, where Michael Darragon did the original composition for. For those of you that don't know Michael Darragon, he was born and raised in New Hampshire, and then traveled around, as his bio said, to as many places as one could afford, and finally landed under the fiery bleached out decay of Los Angeles. He is a film composer, guitarist, multimedia artist, exploring as many realms as he can find. He publishes poems, shows collages, scores films, performs wild soundscapes to visuals, and is in constant search of new ways to explore the emotive ways of the human condition. Uh, his most recent works include That's Moon right. Garden, the original You're score, which was a Best Music nominee and uh, was in the Oscar Michaud Festival. Uh, Moonfall with uh, director Roland Emmerich, uh, which came out with Lionsgate in 2022. And am I saying this right? Hello, Cheerism, We Become Mist. Heliopurism. Cheerism. And then Cole Brook with our good friend William Fitner. Yeah. Love that guy. Yeah, he's he, one of the nicest humans I've ever met. One of the coolest people. Really, really great person. Uh, so it was cool to meet him and also talk to Kane and Let's let's get right into it, Michael. Sure. Just you're an amazing everything, and uh, you know, oftentimes when people meet you, they say like, "How can someone be so talented to do so many things?" We didn't even talk about your paintings, which mm -hmm. everyone can see behind you, all the collages that you do, the sound. Uh, I think the first time that we hung out in LA, I came out. And maybe even saw your band at the Silver Lake Lounge. Am I am yeah, I wrong probably. in thinking that? No, I and, think you're right. And, I think that was about the end of that band. But yeah, I think you, that was the time we met. There, there we go. Bumsy. Yeah, the hell with me. We've got a kitten. Let's yes, talk about forget. the kitten. That's just always just kittens. That's all that we want to care about is kittens. I really, I mean, the world would be a better place. For you, I'm just curious, how did that all come into being? So I know you went to Goddard College. Do you want to? sort of talk about that progression from writing and psychology and you're exploring the mind and then coming to uh, Cal Arts and how that happened for you? Sure. You know, when I was younger, I grew up in New Hampshire, which um, it, in a little town called Bedford, New Hampshire, there was 5,000 people and there was like three neighborhoods dispersed out in the woods. And so when I was younger, there was nothing to do. And I was raised as an only child by my grandmother. Um, my dad and mom had split and um, my, my parents were children. Like my mom had me at 15 years old. So they, they, that whole thing was a disaster. So I spent most of my time either in the woods or in my room. And it was all pure imagination. I, if I didn't entertain myself, I'd go insane. So that's kind of where the, the merge of like just writing poems, reading everything I get my hands on. Um, I was obsessed with my little boom box and, and cassettes. And to the point where I didn't have any musical instrument, there was not one person in my family who's ever played anything. And so, but I would just sit there and play air guitar when I was like five, six, seven, eight years old. And to me, they just all made, it's all one thing. It's all one impulse. It's just one imagination. And I've never quite understood the, this world of why we want to talk about you know, specializing in things because I don't think there's any difference between poetry and making a collage versus making a film versus making a record. Um, it's all an amalgamation of your of your life experience. And yeah, there might be a narrative structure put on top of it. But even as a kid, when I, you know, I'd see a, a cartoon and we'd go out and act it out. And then we 
redesign the the narrative and we'd play all those things out so as i got older and as i went to college and you get more intelligent or you get more experience or more information put at you my real goal was to always remain a child always um to but to get really serious about playing it's all because this is just the picasso quote it's not like my original idea it was just it's like every child is an artist and the problem is, is when we become an adults we throw it away because we've got other things that become more important and it's not like we don't have to pay rent and all these other things and it sounds kind of flippant to be like just remain a child and i don't really think that's truly what they're angling at here or what i'm angling at is just is to become hyper serious about how you play and you have to make play the first and only priority in your life i mean i won't lie and say that you know this kind of crazy um and i would call it slightly obsessively crazy world that i live in um and that i've crafted with all these different arts is sacrificed relationships i've definitely spent money that i didn't have i've moved places um but if I don't do it and I don't make this thing first, then I'm. it's kind of arrogant for me to expect anybody to really care as far as I'm concerned. It's one of those things where, you know, we all want love, but if we don't love ourselves, how dare we ask it from someone else? It's kind of like, I don't really never quite understood why, why we don't get that. This has to become first and then everything else will take care of itself in some way or another. So my process was always, um, obviously I could deal with poetry and writing easier because it's just you and a notebook, you and a, now it's on you and a computer, which I don't really quite think that's quite writing um, in some ways, um, only because our brains affect are affected differently. Um, and then as I got into college, I, you know, I was playing guitar at that point and made all my friends music. <laughs> I just made my friends music majors. They all taught me jazz, you know, jazz theory and all these kind of things. And then put a band together. We needed flyers. This was the late nineties. There was no Facebook. There was no wasn't even my space yet so the only way you were anyone would come to your show is you put flyers on telephone poles and so someone had to make the flyers that's where the collage world came from and i discovered joseph cornell and max ernst and just dug way back in time when these artists that you know who couldn't afford it was wartime they couldn't afford paints so they grabbed magazines for two cents and they cut them out and started doing photo collage and those kind of things and so the three of those things always went hand in hand for me. And I have always thought, I see music with color. I hear sound when I paint. And then there's just language. And language is our only way of actually understanding the world and, and communicating it. So when it came to those things, they're all very much one creature, as you are, as we all are. Um, it's a shame that we kind of shun this or compartmentalizing is one of the, I think the biggest diseases that's ever happened to a humanity. And th this little device right here makes us all do it 24 seven, you know, but we're talking about a six inch universe. Why in the hell did we reduce our universe to six inches? And it's an awesome tool, but to me, the analog world, paper, glue, charcoal. And I know PK was even saying some of you guys have messed around with 16 millimeter cameras half of that moon garden, it, it, it was all shot on 35 millimeter. Um, they built miniatures, there's animation, there's stop motion. There's like everything that you would want in one little film and they made it for $50,000. And it's blowing up through all these festivals. It just got bought by a huge distribution company that so it'll be out in the world after the new year and they're gonna put out a vinyl release. And it's like amazing because Ryan didn't, shun all that stuff he took everything he loved and put it in the movie and it's even his four-year-old daughter or i think she was five at the time but so that's how i kind of blended them all and obviously studying at a university really helped because you run into all kinds of people and you know i always did a double double major or i would do two degrees at once again sacrificing a lot of social time a lot of things that all my friends were out partying I was trying to do two BAs. And if I was going to go to grad school when I went to Cal Arts, I didn't just do one. I had to do two. If I was going to go, what the hell else am I going to do? Um, and so those were kind of the things. Like I think everything that's ever happened in your in your lives is fodder to make work. And so I never wanted to or really could distinguish between collage 
to scoring a film, to making records, to writing a poem. Um, Cause oftentimes my breaks during recording sessions would be to go write. Or even in my, if I flip my camera around, that's my painting studio. If I go this way, it's a total sound studio. So I'm, I'm sitting around surrounded by synthesizers and guitar pedals. And often when I'm working on one, I need the other so I can forget, or you know, if I'm listening to music, then I'm gonna be making collages. If I'm working on collages and I kind of get stuck, then I'm over here making a sound. And so that's kind of how I've always done it.